Miko Koivu and the Minnesota Wild look to be down and out in mid-January. But since then, they have more points than anyone in the league and are looking to punch their ticket to the postseason. Jonathan Taves of the Chicago Blackhawks will appear in their seventh straight second season. But will they be seated in this locker room for games one and two in the opening round? The race to the postseason continuing next. regular season home game scheduled for the Chicago Blackhawks who have only split their last four games in this rink. Tonight they take on a divisional foe and one of the hottest teams in the league in the second half, the Minnesota Wild, who have won 10 straight away from home coming into the action tonight. Welcome in everybody. Pat Foley thrilled you with us for Chicago Blackhawks. Final week hockey, just three games to go in the regular season. Young old check in just a moment. Let's take a look at the ever-changing standings in the Western Conference. Now the Blackhawks on a good run of one for their last five games. They have their sights still on first place, but are three points behind St. Louis, just two points behind Nashville as they try to assume a home ice position in the opening round of the playoffs. Now for the Minnesota Wild, they've come from a long way back, but still not completely solidified in the postseason yet. They uh, still need a couple more points in all likelihood to uh, qualify for sure for the postseason, but they have come all from a long way back to get into this position. So it's the time of year, three games left, second season next week. You want to have all things clicking on all cylinders, and the Blackhawks, one of their great leaders and one of the most important people on this team is a guy who we always call the stat sheet stuffer, Brent Seabrook. He is second on the team in hits. He is first in block shots. He is a very important member of this group, and he took a moment with Eddie Olchek on the ice before the game tonight. All right, Seabs, you guys have won four of your last five. It seems like you're playing better team defensively. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, we, we've, uh, you know, over the last couple games, we've made a, a definite conscious effort to, to be better in our own zone. I think we've been doing it well. A team like Minnesota, you played them the last couple of games. They've gotten a lot of shots on you guys, almost two to one. How do you limit those chances that they've gotten the last couple of games? Uh, I think it's a full team effort. I think all five guys on the ice got to do Got to do their job, and, and uh, you know Minnesota's got a great team, so we gotta we gotta come hard and, and uh, be ready tonight. Hard to believe there's only three games left, Steve. But is it hard not to look at next week when the most important time of year in the playoffs start? Uh, it's the funnest time of the year is the playoffs, but uh, we gotta get uh, these three games out of the way and get a job done and, and get uh, get playing our best hockey role in the playoffs. Keep up the great work. Appreciate your time. All right, thanks, Edzo. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Seabs. And uh, the Minnesota Wild present an interesting question. Can you be the MVP of the league if you only play half a season in some place? Devin Dubnik showed up in the middle of January, and look at the predicament the Wild were in. Well out of a playoff position. Since then, the hottest team in the National Hockey League. If he's not one of the fi three finalists, he's certainly going to be in the conversation. And Devin Dubnik tonight will uh, play his 38th straight game in the Minnesota Wild net. So the Blackhawks uh, have had a good run against Minnesota so far this season. They beat him the first three times they played him. Then Devin Dubnik showed up, and the last get-together, he had 24 saves in a 3-0 wild shutout win over the Blackhawks. So the Hawks looking for two more points tonight when we come back and drop the puck in the UC.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise, kindly remove all hats to honor U.S. Navy Lieutenant Junior Grade Mike Balavia, U.S. Navy Petty Officer Kimberly Balavia, U.S. Navy Veteran Pharmacist Mate Second Class Benny Napleton, and Joint Organist Frank Pellico, and soloist Jim Gunnielsen for the singing of our national anthem. Take a look at the Ford goaltending matchup tonight. And Corey Crawford back in the blue paint for Joel Quenville. That save percentage is eighth best in the entire NHL. In the last two games, he's only given up three goals against. But his record is one and one because uh, his team only got him one goal four on uh, Sunday. And at the other end, it's been a constant since he arrived in the middle of January. The 38th consecutive start for Devin Dubnik. Goals against and save percentage second best in the entire league. He is sixth in wins. A guy who was almost out of the game. Talk about a renaissance or a resurrection or whatever you want to, however you want to term it. It has been remarkable what he has brought to the Minnesota franchise. There's Danny O'Hatter and he's paired up with Dean Morton tonight. The lines of Tony Sericolo, David Friesbois. And a rare opportunity for the Marcus Kruger line to get a start. Miko Koivu's line turned in by head coach Mike Hill. The visitors have to turn in their lineup first. Quenville goes with uh, the Kruger group against them. Zucker, who has not played for the Wild since Feb 9. And rolled it back. Here's Stewart looking to center. It rolled all the way back to Spurgeon. His long flip shot is blocked by Kruger. In behind Stewart. Big body presence for Chris Stewart. He left it on the end boards. Koivu. Rings it around, Zucker pushed it back to Spurgeon, goes the other way, then got it back, Jared Spurgeon up the board, Zucker's shot never got through, Tara Vinen will come out. He just safely wants to clear it back the other way and try to change quickly while trying to catch him in that, but Stewart not able to get all the way to the net. Rosaval bothered by Parise, who steals. Jack Parise, his sixth 30 goal season this year. He spins it back to Ryan Suter with a long shot. Oh, and that just deflected wide. Then Jalmerson goes up the boards. Taves cleared it. Osa checked by Suter. And now the wild regroup. This first period is brought to you by Chevy and Chevy Drives, Chicago.com. Now Pommonville dumped it. Rosaval retrieved it. Winds it around. Sharp had it escape him. A bouncing puck finally captured by Taves. He cleared it across to Bickle. Ryan Bickle to the line with a long slap shot into the glove of Dubnik. The AT&T U-verse starting lines can be found at the top of your screen. 
Devin Dubnik, right after he showed up, in fact, the first game he ever played for the Wild, he had a shutout win. He had 18 saves. That was only Buffalo that they beat, but had a shutout victory in the middle of January in his first start. In the fourth game that he played for him, he got pulled. But that's been it. He's played every minute of every other game since arriving in the middle of January. His 38th consecutive start for Minnesota tonight. And just an incredible run. Here comes Sharp looking to drive. He was post checked before he could pull the trigger. Good I point. want to ask you the question I posed to Mike Hill a little bit earlier. Now a save by Dubnik. Can you be the MVP in the league if you only play in a, in a place for half a year? Well, you mentioned that a couple of games ago, Pat, and uh, a lot of people uh, took mention of what you asked. Uh, it's, it's incredible. It really is. And look, why not? Because without any goaltending, the Minnesota Wild are not in the playoffs. And, you know, you wonder why general manager Chuck Fletcher didn't address that a little bit earlier. Now, whether or not he did or he didn't, we won't know. But I think Mike Yo's teams have overachieved over the last couple of years. And, uh, I mean, Dubnik's been the MVP of this team, no question. Now, Vermette rings it around. There's Saad. Bends it back. Antoine Vermet, by the way, back in the middle to uh, open up this game. He's at a centerized position. Now Vermet rolled it loose, and the pass picked off. A Wild able to clear it. And the first NHL, NHL shifter for this man, Kyle Bond, just 22 years of age, wearing 39 red. He drops it back. We'll head for a change. And Jalmerson. Cleared it back into Minnesota ice. Coil on it for the Wild. That Dumbo will ring it around. Now Dumbo will let the Wild organize. They're trying to change on the move. Well, it's cleared back into Chicago territory. Seabrook paired up with Oduya here in the early going. This puck held into Stewart. In behind Zucker. Jason Zucker's pass broken up Oduya. Able to clear it back to center ice. Now here comes Kruger to the offensive end. They're a long flip shot, easily gloved by Dubik, Dubnik, and he uh, holds on. Well, I asked that same question uh, this morning, Eddie, to uh, the head coach, Mike Hill, that you referenced a moment ago. Now, you won't be surprised, but his answer can a guy be an MVP only playing half a year one place? And emphatic, yes. And, we, and he said, look what's happened to our team. I mean, we've come from a long way back, and it would be an oversimplification to say it's all Dubik, right. the reason for the turnaround. But listen, you and I, we've talked, everybody's talked about it a lot. If you don't have goaltending in this league, you got no chance. Sure. And we saw the Wild on several occasions in the head-to-head -head matchup. And you talked about it with Brent Seabrook. They were getting more chances than the Hawks were getting. But a bad one would go in, and, sure. you know, Minnesota winds up chasing the game. And a bad goal a game for the first 30-some games. They really wanted to fire the coach, and, you know, but look, he's coaching the same, the team's playing the same system. But when you're getting that, and you play with a confidence, but you see when Corey Crawford's playing that way, yeah. or Scott Darling's playing that way, you just know that you can play on your toes and... We just play and know that if you give up an odd man situation or a breakaway or whatever, the goaltender is going to have your back. Chance for Shaw, whose shot is smothered at the D. Bickle trying to keep it in, but it's batted back to center ice. Shaw lines it around. Sharp is checked in deep by Scandella. Held in Keith. Up the board, Bickle. His pass was red and picked off. Right, Rod Jack able to clear. Well, just one more point on that. We're talking with Mike Yo this morning about this uh, on this topic, Eddie. He said it would be an unfair oversimplification to say it's all on the goalie. Because that takes that gives no credit to the rest of the group. But he did say the confidence of this team started to grow when they realized they were going to get some saves. And they they finally figured out, hey, just worry about doing your own job. You don't have to try to do anybody else's. And you've been involved with teams sure. where that's the case, no and question. things get messed up easily when that's happening. Now for Matt, uh, work a give and go. Bond's return pass didn't connect. Now the Wilds, Leopold. They go up the middle. Zucker, going to give it to Charlie Coyle, who was going for a change, so. 
Here's Jalmerson. Able to clear to center. Vaughn dumped it. Ludnick bats it to the boards, and here comes Koibu. Here to the head. Zucker couldn't catch the pass cleanly. Keep an eye on Zucker. You mentioned a pat down a long time. He's had a tremendous year. 18 goals so far for 16 in white. Here's 16 in red. Kruger trying to throw it right to the goal mouth. Or do you give it back to him? Kruger. Standard hit. Quick shot. Good save. Great, great chance there for Nordstrom. Who's not played in the last six games, but a terrific setup gave jo uh, Joakim Nordstrom a terrific opportunity. Watching the Minnesota Wild the last handful of games, Pat, I think on Dubnik, you've got to think, hold on to that puck a second longer. He's been down last night in that game in Winnipeg. He was down awfully early on a lot of chances. So I think if you can go crossbar it in high and hard around the ears, you give yourself a chance to score. Taves turns in deep. Now Hosa takes over. Rolled it back, Chalmerson. The other way, Roosevelt's long shot, a high riser gloved by Dubnik, who will hold. And a 13 and a half remaining in a scoreless first in Chicago. Welcome back to the United Center up at press level. I'm Tracy Myers for CSN Chicago.com. Talked with Kyle Vaughn earlier today about playing in his first NHL game tonight. He was obviously excited, but certainly wanted to keep the nerves in check. Vaughn said, if I think about it too much, I'll start freaking out. At the end of the day, it's just another hockey game, which is what I've been doing a good chunk of my life. Pat Nettie, back to you. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Nothing like your first National Hockey League game. Congratulations to... Kyle Bond. You can follow Tracy Myers, our Blackhawks insider, all season long on CSNChicago.com, presented by Nationwide's Jeff Vukovic. Click JeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. Well, what a chance here, Pat. Marcus Kruger out to Joachim Nordstrom. And look at Dubnik down. Lots of room upstairs. But again, if you get an opportunity to hold on to that puck a second longer... Throw those hands up towards the crossbar. You might have a chance to beat a guy that you would think at some point has gotten a little tired here on the unbelievable run that he has made. He wasn't even in the National Hockey League at times over the course of the last 365 days before he got here to Minnesota. All right, now the Hawks uh, get it back to Keith. Ben Runblad tried a long shot that was smothered. Vanek right in his way, but Runblad gets it back. Drive and rolled it loose. But uh, did not connect with anybody. Brodeen goes up the boards. Fontaine comes out. Fontaine rolled it in. Here's Koibu a blast. Short side save by Crawford. And it's picked up by Vermette. Now ahead for Brandon Saad. Todd pressured. He lost it. Here's Koibu with shot hitting the side of the goal. Hawks only had four guys on the ice pad for about 10 seconds there. Slow change at the bench. Well, they work in deep and Granlin rolled it loose. Hosa able to chase it down. Banks it ahead looking for Tate. He's going to get to it in the corner with Rodin. Suter knocked it loose. Parise couldn't get it out. A centering pass for Hosa. That is back to the goal, however. Alver Steve to Taves. Donovan Taves got it in front. Here's for Steve. Got help from Hosa. Looked to slip it into the doorstep, but now it's taken by Jalmerson. Rosa ball to Hosa. Marion Hosa with a five game point streak alive. Now it's taken by Taves. Into the corner for Steve. Standard it, Taves, the pass, pass was tipped. Here's for Stieg along and it's blocked. Captured by Jalmerson. Great shift. Taves, now to Hosa. Best shift of the game so far for the Hawks. Rosenbaugh's long one, never got through. Now it's just fine, the blue paint. And Dubnik in the way to smother. But the Taves line, virtually entire shift in the offensive zone. Yeah, a game to keep away for a good 45, 50 seconds. Great strength by Marion Hosa initially pat along the board to win the physical battle, not allowing Zach Parise to get the puck. Roosevelt gets his puck to the net. For Steaks tied up here, Pat, and if he ends up trying to kick at it or not, yeah, he gives a little kick there to Devin Dubnik and Taves looking for a rebound. 
Runblad tried along with this block. Now the race is on. Niederreiter's going to get to the net. Nino Niederreiter. Good cut across by Duncan Keith. He used his great wheels to prevent what could have been a good chance. Great move by Keith to bail out his D partner. Pickle at the other end. Throws it around the board. Shaw. Oh, cleared loose in the wild. Will come out. Hooker into the zone, looking to center. That's picked off. Good stick, Keith. Shaw the other way. Sharp into the zone with a wrist shot, missing the mark. And goes all the way back to Oduya. Yeah, you mentioned the pack two. Good defensive plays there by number two, Duncan Keith. Odd man situation, that last one there. Quick butt three on two from the red line in. Nordstrom for Kruger, whose shot was smothered. Now Caravine and Edward Roll loose to center. Here's Brent Seabrook. Long feed to Marcus Kruger, who's dropped past. He got to what it looked like, but we play on. And the Wild Stewart now turns back. Well, clearly, that was Miko Koivo, I believe, that got the stick right in the midsection there, Kruger, and nothing called. Run wide. He's only played in three of the last 13 Hawks games. Been a plus one in that time. Here's Coyle in against him with a backhand shot missing. He comes back to Brodeen. His long flipper blocked by Keith. Duncan Keith works back ahead. Side into the zone for Vermetta. Weak backhander sticked away by Dubnik. Now dug out by the Hawks. Here's Keith looking to Saad. Brandon Saad fired a long shot. That hit his own man in front of the net. Now Vaughn got it back. Dropped it to Keith. A long shot hit. Traffic in front laid loose. Wild able to get it. And Coyle moved it out. Now here's a Kyle Vaughn. Eddie, in your first NHL game, playing for your hometown team. Now, he used the word, the, the phrase, I like what Tracy picked up from him. He talked about not thinking too much or he'll freak out. <laughs> Here's a chance for Pominville. Firing and a save made by Crawford. It's up off the netting, out of play. So a good bid for Jason Pominville, who's had a pretty good year for the Wild with 17 tallies, but we're still scoreless. Well, time now for our Hyundai what to look for and my great Hall of Fame partner has mentioned a couple of times the unbelievable run that the Minnesota Wild have been on with Devin Dubnik in goal. And how about that? They've won 10 straight road games. The last time that happened, partner, was back in 2007. The wow. San Jose Sharks did it in November into December, but it's just an incredible run. And uh, it was interesting. I was talking to Ryan Suter before the game pad, and I mean, they were going great guns here until this last, you know, this losing streak that they've been on the last three. But what kind of coincided with that? Because they had four days off. Yeah. From the run that they've been on through these last three games, and they've just not been able to get, you know, back on, you know, back on track here as of late. Last night, they did not have a whole heck of a lot of pushback and not a lot of offense against Winnipeg last night, but a team that has a lot of confidence right now on the road, no doubt about it. They probably got to be pretty pleased with the first period that they've had to this point. Commonville's long one blockered away by Crawford. And Taves able to sidestep a check and clear to center. Jalmerson tees it up for a blast. That's a block by Pominville. It broke his stick on the shot block. And then Niederreiter able to roll it back to Suter. Well, Minnesota, you said it. they've been good on the road. They're going to need to be. Now, they're at 96 points right now, and I mentioned this, that it feels likely they might need another point or two to make sure, sure to qualify for the playoffs. But they finish. Mike Yo thought that pass was tipped, but uh, icing is ruled. But Mike Yo's team after tonight, they finished the year with two more road games. They're in Nashville. They're in St. Louis. So three very difficult divisional games to finish off the regular season for the Minnesota Wild. But they still are thinking that they have a chance to catch the Hawks. I mean, if they sure. the Hawks don't get any more points, they win all three of their games, uh, they'll have the tiebreaker. So want to make sure they get in somehow and they're in a good position to do that but the job's not seemingly finished yet here's Niederreiter 
Hit it to Brodine. It goes back to Suter. Ryan Suter has had 23 games this year where he's played over 30 minutes. That's amazing. Iron lung. Sharp going wide, looking to drive. Centered it. Not quite connecting with Bickle. And Coyle now turns back. That Dumba takes over. He's got eight goals as a defenseman, Dumba. Here's it out to center. Stewart's going to lose it. He gets to the line. Kruger the other way. Put it in for Runblad, but the Kruger been knocked down when skidding in there offside. Hey, Pat, go back to the standings. And from the Hawks' point of view, we talked about this before the, uh, before the game. With St. Louis and Nashville both playing tonight, you know, the Hawks don't get any points out of this game, and Nashville and St. Louis both win. The Hawks can't go any higher than third place in their division. So, I mean, the crucial crucial time of the, of the season, and yeah, there's still a, sh a shot at getting first place in the division, but you got to take care of business here first against the Minnesota Wild. And we will be some doing some scoreboard watching yeah. tonight. Everybody in the division is playing except for Dallas tonight, and they're out of it anyway, so we'll be keeping a close eye on what's happening with all the other involved Central Division teams. As the night wears on, St. Louis Winnipeg scoreless in the first intermission of their game. Here's Spurgeon stepping in. Into the corner, Stewart. Here's Stewart. Check. Nice stick work from uh, Vaughn. And uh, now the Hawks able to get possession with Keith Long pass missing. Going to go all the way down icing Chicago. A reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, maybe you're on your second one in this first period. Look forward to Miller time. <laughs> It'll be brought to you later by Miller Life. Hey, Pitt. So a quick birthday shout out. Uh, Daniel and Elizabeth Scherhey out there in Romeoville, Illinois. Twins. Happy 16th birthday. Big Blackhawk fans, and they think you're the greatest, but who doesn't? <laughs> They're smart, smart young people. All right, now, uh, I don't know what to say to that. Here's Keith <laughs> clearing it out. Vaughn, a nice move, able to chip it in. And they duel in the corner. Seabrook joins the party, rings it around. Here's Oduya. Well, Vaughn delivered a good check, knocked Leopold right to his wallet, but the puck cleared to center ice. Well, Bannock was doing there. He didn't know how, where the puck was, and he just skated right to Brent Seabrook, and Seabrook was able to move that puck right up. All right now, Hosa into the zone. There was poke check right there. And Nick Jalmerson, who in his last 12 games has been a plus 14. Jalmerson, for most of that time, he paired up with Oduya. Tonight he opens with Roosevelt. And again, it's just amazing to me. Here he is looking so comfortable on the left side. He's been playing the right side almost right. the entire year. And he's got the puck over to Roosevelt. That goes Granlin for the Wild. Suter. Bank pass finds Granlin. He's going to get the line. Mikhail Granlin going to get away from Runblad. He cuts in deep. Centered it. Here's a blast. Burgeon. The puck was rolling. He put it up off the glass. Stewart threw it in front. Sharp is there. And Bickle comes out. Throws it in, hoping for Shaw on the corner. Now Granlin for the Wild. Fires a long pass to Keith Red and broke up. Bickle the other way. Good pass. Here's Shaw driving. Could not get rid of a shot. Nice work, Scandella, defensively. And then Stewart chipped it to center. Zucker helped by Koivu. In behind Stewart, spins it back. Dumba. A long flip shot, never got past Keith. Stewart takes over. Back to Dumba. Here it comes. He just missed the near post. And then Tara Vinen rolled it to center. Ruger bounced it in there. Leopold now gets help from Matt Dumba, who sends it back the other way. 
Ren Seabrook, who leads the Blackhawks in shot clock, second in hits. Hit this ahead for Saad. And inside, ties it out of the corner. Ben Vermet rolled it back, Oduya. He jumped away from Seabrook to Niederreiter. Seabrook picked off his feed. Oduya. Horse to circle now, looks ahead to Vermet. Once will change or try to change as they keep control of the puck. Oh. Steeg gonna dump it in, but it hits sharp and laid there. Back comes Kyle Brodzia. That's the Hawks line. And a good stick by Jalmerson. Still no score. Getting to the late part of the first. A little under three minutes remaining. There's five shots for the Wild and eight for the Hawks so far in the game. Now Duncan Keith. Two goals in his last four games. Gave this one to Jalmerson who flipped it ahead, but he's going to watch it go right back the other way. No icing there. And Zebra pounds it around the board. Out comes Taze. Donovan Taze was for Steve Givenet. Taze. Now got checked by Brodeen. He perseveres, though, and he's still got it. Taves to Versteeg. Who got turned around. Commonville got help to clear it out of there. Parise steps into the zone. Zach Parise right through a check to the back. And goal post. Zach Parise beat Crawford to the stick side. Drew Iron. Now Brodeen along with that just missed. Rebound was a bouncing puck on the Stewart. The Hawks then able to get it back. Suter with a takeaway. Parise gained the line. Tried to center, it hit a hawk skate, came right to Crawford, who kicked to the side. And now 90 seconds to go in the first. Rosaval, helped by Nordstrom, he's going to drop it to Jalmerson. Bounced it out to center. Lara Vinen got checked by Scandella. And the Wild. Get it back into the offensive end for them. Jones is long pass picked off before reaching Tara Vinan. Scandella the other way. Fight through. Jomerson slipped it in front. Here's a chance. Big save by Crawford on Zucker. Great chance for Jason Zucker and Crawford beat him point blank. Final minute now of the first. Here's a dump in by the Hawks. We get down to. Half a minute remaining in the opening period. Now Niederreiter gets the line, dropped it to Vanek, who goes the other side. Suter to Brodeen. Here it comes. That's the hit traffic in front. Now another chance. That didn't get to the goal either. They worked the corner, centering pass, found nobody home for the Wild. Seabrook safely got it out of there. Will it go far enough for icing? No, is the call. And so the first period will expire. But the Wild in the late stages had a couple of real solid bids, didn't they? Well, what an opportunity for Jason Zucker, somebody we talked about a little bit earlier. In behind the net, Koivu goes hard. There's Zucker, not able, able to elevate that puck. Terrific save off the blocker from Corey Crawford. How about the rush by Zach Parise at the end there, Pat? Little forehand, backhand, puck on edge. Crawford down right off the post. And something to keep an eye on here, Pat, is that the Minnesota Wild are flying guys outside the zone when they have the opportunity. So watch what ends up happening in this area here. Anytime they get a chance to go on a break, they're flying the zone here. They're trying to get in behind the Blackhawk defenseman to look maybe for a breakaway, look for an odd man rush. So something for Blackhawk defensemen to keep an eye on. All right, the uh, Blackhawks had eight shots in the first period. The Wild had six, but we're scoreless at the end of one. Blackhawks Hockey on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers. Visit buyhyundai.com. BMO Harris Bank. We're here to help.
Ford, who invites you to visit your local Ford store or localfordstores.com. Corona Extra, find your beach. And by Kia. Visit mykiachicago.com to learn more. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois has teamed up with the Blackhawks and moved two lucky fans closer to the action as part of tonight's Blue Seat Upgrade Experience. Don't forget to bring your Blue Cross and Blue Shield card for your chance to win. Blue Cross through it all. And congratulations to tonight's winners. Welcome back inside the United Center. No scores. We get ready for the second period between the Hawks and the Minnesota Wild. Well, Hawk fans, text lottery to B Hawks <laughs> for a chance to win two season tickets for the Blackhawks 2015 16 regular season, courtesy of the Illinois Lottery. That's lottery to 242 957. And be sure to watch the drawing in the second period of tonight's game. Look at that oven mitt, partner. <laughs> I got a couple. They're coming home to the lovely and talented Diana Olchek tonight. Who will need them because. These fabulous <laughs> chocolate chip cookies that were wonderfully delivered by her other half. <laughs> Thank you, Diana. But uh, these are only going to last a day or two. So, you know, <laughs> if it should happen in the near future, you uh, are heading back to the uh, near the oven. That's and he's got a nice hand warmer for you. <laughs> it's a pretty good chance it's not going to be on the, the pad of the back. It might be uh, across the uh, side of the cheek. <laughs> Take out the garbage. <laughs> There's Miko Koivu who has a three goals the last five games for the Minnesota Wild. But Daddy mentioned this. They come in here 0-2-1 the Wild, and this is like the first blip they've had since Dubnik showed up in the middle of January. The uh, longest they've gone without a win is uh, this little three-game run. So now we get underway with period two. And the second period is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Marco Scandella, who had a couple of real nice defensive plays in the opening frame. We'll clear it out to center ice. Stewart going wide, pulls up, ran out of time. Now Stewart gets to it in deep. His uh, pass hit the skate of Seabrook, picked up by Tara Vinan, who rolled to center. The Hawks have to turn right back around. Koivu. Rolled it in deep. Zucker there with a stuff shot down low. Crawford. Rebound taken by Tave. And backhand to center ice. Versteeg with a bouncing puck. A quick wrist shot soaked up by Devin Dubnik. Well, time now for our AT&T U-verse upcoming schedule. And not a lot of ink remaining on the regular season schedule. I'll tell you that. Two more games remaining. Hawks will be in St. Louis on Thursday night, right here on Comcast Sportsnet, to close out the season in Denver against the Avalanche on WGM. All right, now, Hummerville couldn't pick it up. Rodine followed up, rolled it loose. This is going to be held in. Jalmerson. Versteeg out of the corner for Tay. Jalmerson's one-timer, a bouncing shot went wide. Osa dropped it to Rosaval. Now the Wild Parise able to clear it out of there. Marion Hosa to Nick Jalmerson and Denver Steeg's pass found only the Wild suitor. Buck shot back the other way by the visitors. It's going to be icing. Well, fans, don't miss your chance to catch all the exciting Blackhawks action from in between the player benches. Been on the CME Group seats through the online CME Group seats auction. For more info, visit chicagoblackhawks.com. All right now, Shaw and Brandlin get ready. 64 beat 65 that time. Buck held in, run Blad. Put it around the board. Sharp back to Keith, whose one-timer was a fluttering attempt. And now it's taken back by Runblad. Good back check there from Bickle, Pat. Real quick, good hard stick there, good quick stick. Keep that play alive. 
Andrew Shaw with four goals his last eight games. Put it to Bickle. He was checked, though, and cleared to center. Oh, Runblad lost it. Here's a chance for the Wild. Project to the goal. Big save by Coughlin. Rebound. Take it by Fontaine. Now Sharp got it back, then turned it over Fontaine in front, Vanek. Good save by Coffert again. Two great chances for the Wild, both denied by the Crows. And at the other end, an easy save, Dubnik on long wrister, Bickle. Well, from our weather tech robo cam coming right at you. Vanek in behind, Michael Ronblad interferes with him. Here comes Brodziak getting some pressure. Duncan Keith made four great defensive plays, Pat, and that's one of them there, putting pressure on the goaltender. And then Thomas Vanek, the turnover from Sharp. Fontaine to Vanek, great right pad save there from Corey Crawford. And Vanek's been going well for the Wild. Eight goals his last 14 games, but that chance denied. Here's Jalmerson, helped by... Bond, that's a hand pass, and the whistle goes. So Kyle Vaughn, just to 22 years of age, and uh, Joe Quenville this morning talking about, was asked about, uh, you know, what do you say to a young kid in his sure. first NHL game? Look, don't think too much. Use, use your quickness. Trust your instinct. And he mentioned in his uh, great chat with uh, Luke in the intermission that he wanted to uh, be a physical presence. He had three hits yeah. and five yeah. minutes of play. So he was throwing his weight around in the opening 20. Yeah, less is more as a young player when you're playing your very first game and considering the magnitude of this game as well. It's, uh, congratulations to him and uh, welcome to the National Hockey League. They're all his buddies back at Colgate or watching on television, I'm sure, in between their studies at school. <laughs> Vermette with a little space here, dropped it, and Saad's going to shoot it. Save Dubnik. Rebound held in by Oduya. Well, Saad had it jammed loose and coil. A little win a board battle. A little wild recover. Spurgeon for Niederreiter. Dumping it in. Here's Kyle or uh, Brent Seabrook. Bring it out to a wild end. Matt Dumba now for Minnesota goes to the right wing board. Stewart is checked. And Jordan Leopold cleared into Chicago ice. Going to be held in. Spurgeon's long flipper goes wide. And Tara Vinen got it out of there. Mark trying to change quickly. Wild looking to catch him in that. Here comes Zucker. Dropped it back. A Koibu shot went up high. Two Taves. His pass is picked off. Duncan Keith able to uh, clear it ahead. Here's Hosa. Helped by Jalmerson. A long wrist shot kicked away. Dubnik. And the rebound to Brodeen. No! Jason Commonville, with his last 12 games, only has one goal. Drops this back and. A wild misfire and a pass going all the way down, icing Chicago. Well, we mentioned the uh, name of Kyle Bond several times tonight. Eddie, his uh, first ever game as a 22-year-old in the league. Pretty good bloodlines. Look at Grandpa. Bobby Bond, a uh, brilliant defenseman for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs for many, many years and scored one of the most historic postseason goals ever, which he scored in uh, overtime with a broken leg. Was uh, the game that set up the lease for a Stanley Cup win? That particular goal didn't win it, but uh, I think they cemented the uh, victory the next the next time they play. Here's a Dubnik short side save, rebound picked up by the Hawks. Sharp dropped it back. Seabrook's long shot off a leg to Pommonville long feet, and he talked about the wild fly in the zone. Parise was in position to try that there. 
Now he took a man down. Grandin to Parise. Quick shot. Good save by Crawford. Rebound to Fontaine. He tries. Crawford with the right pad. Terrific work for Corey Crawford here in the first six minutes of period two. Now Suter slowly from his own end to Justin Fontaine. Dodziak checked. Taken away to Bond. Well, Bond works a little give and go. Looking to get it to the middle of the pass block. Vermette rolled it back. Keith. Now to Vermette out of the corner. He's going to try to snap one off. And a save on the short side by Dubnik, who covers it up. We've played almost or just over six minutes here in the uh, second period. Remaining scoreless in the UC. Well, time now for our Kia drive to the net. And we look at Zach Parise. This season. That's the sixth different time he's reached the 30 goal milestone. We've talked about it a lot, Eddie. You've only got one 50-goal score in the league. Production down everywhere. There will not be a 90-point player in the NHL this year. So uh, still rock solid numbers for Zach Parise, who uh, one of his things he likes to do, getting ready for a game, he'll go out in the hallway and play catch. He's got. He brings a mid on the road. He's playing catch with one of the trainers. Watch that for a little while and. Uh, He's got a knuckleball that's not quite Wilbur Woodish, but he does try. All right, here's Runblad, who uh, coming into the game was a plus 16. That's fourth on the Blackhawks team. Vaughn looks to center. It's picked off. And now a long bank pass, missing Bannock going down. Crawford out to play it to no Ison. Brandon Saad. Now to go up the middle is, he got jammed up, and then Kruger tried a shot that came back to him. Marcus Kruger goes across to Oduya. In behind for Saad. A goal and six points in the last seven games for the Hawks. Saad, Saad the winger. They do your shot here, deflecting, and Tara Vinen, a long flipper, handled easily by Dubnik. And the Wild able to get it out. Now here's a steal. Oh, Norsham had to jump loose, however. A little help there from Koivu on the back pressure there. Good stick there by the center iceman for the Wild. Merchant's had some real good jump here, Pat. He's had some jump in his step. Had a great chance back in that yeah. first period. Hawks change on the dump in this time. Wild making a few changes also. And Parise did not get any further than center that time. Grandlin gets the line. Rolled it in behind. Parise now taking away Pominville. And his pass didn't connect with anybody. Well, he had that puck on his forehand there. Nobody in between him and his net. And you talked about the numbers struggling lately. Well, he had a chance to get the puck to the net and felt the table up here uh, kind of move a little bit. You got the management team in the wild set to our right about 10 feet. And I think they thought the same thing. Nine minutes gone by here in the second. Still a scoreless duel in the United Center. Bickle took it away. Shaw, two on one. Shaw looking to center. What a play in front of the net by Spurgeon. And a save by Dubnik. Reba got through Dubnik, and the goal was saved by Jared Spurgeon. That's what it looked like the puck eluded the goalie, and Spurgeon scraped it off the goal line. Runblad gets right back in. His shot is blocked. Now Niederreiter, a little across, Schrader couldn't catch up with it. 
Brown, out of the wild, able to keep control. Niederreiter to the line, left it. Brodziak shot it, kicked away by Crawford. Side up the boards. Vaughn knocked down, but the Hawks do get it out. Fontaine dumped it in. Duncan Keith made a couple of real good plays, Pat. I'll take hit Brodziak on Runblad going back for that puck. Yeah, he just leveled up as the play continues. And Runblad back into the play, able to clear it ahead. Here come the Hawks. Side going wide. Keith trying to head for the net, but the pass just out of his reach. And Brodziak the other way. Kyle Brodziak dropped it back down to Brodziak. It missed. And Dumba delivered a good check. The D-man down behind the Hawk net that time. Leopold kept it in. Jordan Leopold. A long shot is blocked by Seabrook looking to lead a counterattack. The Hawks near the end of a shift will get it off the chain. Koivu cleared it ahead. Good stick by Oduya right at the line. Here's Nordstrom along wrist shot and a save. Dubik nearly gave a rebound, but able to reach ahead and cover it up. Well, now we're past the halfway point of regulation. Both teams have with the little boys. Well, time now for our BMO Harris Bank check replay. Kyle Brodziak on David Runblad. Nothing came of that play for the Minnesota Wild, but a good hit there for the fourth line center Iceman. And how about the play by Brian Bickle here, Patty? Tied up the. Minnesota Wild, Marco Scandella, and I thought Andrew Shaw had a chance to shoot the puck right away there, Pat, and that just really missed an opportunity. I mean, that chance is an A-plus chance if you're Andrew Shaw. Fire it. If you want to shoot for the far pad and get it over to Patrick Sharp, okay. But Brian Bickles made a couple of real good plays from my chair, my vantage point here tonight. A hit, a couple of hits, good play along the boards to create a two-on-one, but the Hawks just missed that opportunity. Terrabine off the draw, shot it, and a save. Dudnik was able to hang on. Hey, Pat, uh, you know, you were talking about Zach Parise and, you know, not only him and, uh, you know, Ryan Suter, teammates and signing here, but they're co-owners along with Thomas Vanek of the Madison Capitals of the United States Hockey League. Uh, of course, Ryan Suter from Madison, Wisconsin, and they bought into the United States Hockey League. Luke Strand's a head coach and general manager in Madison. They do a wonderful job. They're a first year. Uh, in Madison, so not only uh, giving back to their local community in, in St. Paul, but also giving back to the uh, hockey community in Madison, Wisconsin. Well, that's... He comes by it honestly, Eddie. Yeah, you no pointed question. it out. I mean, his yeah. dad, Bob, there yeah. are a few hockey players yeah. professionally who came from the state of Wisconsin who at some point didn't have some dealings with a terrific guy and a great coach yeah. in Bob Suter. The attempted dumping goes up and out of play. Hey, Pat, and, uh, speaking of the USHL, tomorrow morning at the uh, at Bensonville, at the, uh, the the rink in Bensonville, the edge, uh, there's going to be a USHL hockey game tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock in the morning. The Chicago Steelers are going to take on the Youngstown Phantoms. And if you want to see players of tomorrow, today, you can go out there tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And a uh, young kid that plays for Youngstown, Kyle Connor, is going to be a high draft pick. Probably maybe one of the top 15 picks in the entire National Hockey League draft coming up, so keep an eye on him. Taves taken down. This will be the first penalty of the game. It took 32 minutes, but uh, finally somebody's going to get a power play. It'll be Taves drawing it from Suter. Yeah, puck was bouncing all around, and Jonathan Taves was able to find that puck, so a man advantage coming. There's that puck is on edge there, and then you see the left skate of Ryan Suter come out. And up and Jonathan Taves, right call made. And what an opportunity here with the man advantage. Well, Dave Ross is going to show you, but the Wild have the best PK rating in the league. But they've been scored on three straight games. Three of the last 12 have been converted against the Minnesota penalty kill. Tara Vinan's touch pass. Now Hosa able to retrieve. Taves to Hosa. They get Shaw to the front of the net. Hosa. Working up the board. Able to hang on while being checked. 
Mosa goes the other way, Terrabine and Keith along one timer, hit his own man on the backside, Shaw. Wild gets the puck and clear. A little bit of a change here for Joe Quinville on this power play path to taking Brandon Sott off of this unit and uh, give Tavo Terravina an opportunity. And he gets to the line but was stripped of it there. Parise giving some problems to uh, Keith. He knocked him down, took it away. Parise. I'm going to play a little keep away to take a few precious seconds off the clock with a minute remaining on the wild penalty. All right, Keith leads him out. Put it on the stick of Saad. And Saad now drives to the front, looks to slip in the front. Nobody near the front of the net four. The home side. Yeah, Brandon Sott's better off to just turn towards the boards there, Pat, and try to set it up or move it along the boards. No hope plays throwing the puck back to the middle of the ice there on that entry. Sharp fights his way into the zone. Rings it around. Versteeg was checked. Wild get it back. Koivu cleared. Now as Seabrook starts back, the Minnesota penalty will expire. Well, that the initial power play of the game for the uh, Blackhawks. That's uh, nothing accomplished. And with a wild gain, any momentum from that, this is icing Minnesota with the penalty having expired. I want to go back to that play by Brandon Saad from our Xfinity Telestrator. All you young hockey players out there, Brandon Saad does a nice job of power moving in, but he just throws this puck into this area here. Better off to stop and turn and buy some time here. There's nobody there. That, that play can't happen. That's a hope play. And you want to put that one in your pocket and save it for another time at the end of a period or whatever it might be. But in that situation, you know what he's trying to do. But in that situation with the man advantage, you're better off. If you're not 110% sure to pass the puck back into the traffic, just peel off and uh, look for some help. All right now for Met gets the line. And Twandre Met a race out. A bouncing shot was stopped by Dudnik. And then he wound up back in his own net. But we play on. There's a wild get it out. Parise had it knocked away. Kruger helped by for Met. Twandre Met looking for his first goal as a Blackhawk. It's just in behind. The Hawks changing. Suter comes out. And Vanek. Stick lifted beautifully by Taze. Hoyle steps into Chicago ice. Thomas Vanek. Put it in deep. Need a rider back to Vanek. Knocked away to Hosa. And it's... Taken back by Spurgeon for the while. Long pass, finding Vanek. He's going to try to drag loose to get away from Seabrook, but didn't uh, completely get himself loose. And no uh, shot attempted. Four and a half remaining now in the second. Here's a Bickle steal. And too many men. He came off the bench, played the puck. His guy he was replacing and not gotten over the boards. Penalty, Chicago. The Wild with their first power play when we come back. Well, what a chance for Antoine Vermette. You talk about skipping rocks. Watch this thing. Good save there from Devin Dubnik. Go back to that too many men on the ice here, Pat. Brian Bickle is coming on the ice as Chris Versteeg is going off. And since Versteeg was not completely off the ice and Bickle played the puck. Too many men on the ice. And I look right at the Minnesota Wild bench. And Mike Yo jumped right up and was yelling at the back official. The official never put his arm up, Pat. He just blew his whistle and gave the sign. A big circle there he made with his hand saying, too many men on the ice. And that's the right call. All right, so the Wild win this draw. And they'll get things set up. Parise to the front of the net. The puck got there. Parise took a whack. Didn't connect. Taken by Pominville. Dropped it back. And Suter takes a look. Ryan Suter. Mason Pominville Suter. 
We'll go to Koivu. Eiko Koivu. Down low. Here's a stop attempt by Parise. Stopped by Cufford. Rebound cleared around and out. The Minnesota power play, three of the last 17 they've cashed. That's over seven games. And the Hawks' PK, once leading the league, now down to seven. They've given up seven of the last 21. Well, they're shorthanded. Seabrook wins a corner battle here, though. And we'll get down to a minute left on the Minnesota power play. Mikhail Granlin rolled it in. Stewart put it in behind. Granlin couldn't pick it up against Seabrook, who has time to take a look. Now Suter, looking for somewhere to go. Granlin had to turn back for that drop pass. A shift ahead, Niederreiter. Dropped it out to the line. Dumba moves to the middle. Will drop it to Niederreiter. He fired a hot pass into the corner. Stewart there. Ben Dumba. Stewart to the front of the net. Granlin looking for a lane. Then Spurgeon. That was not in his wheelhouse. Dumba tries. That is blocked. Held in Spurgeon, the Hawks penalty over. Here's a wrist shot up high off the glass. Both teams full strength after the Hawks PK. Now Bickle, who likes playing against Minnesota, dropped in sharp. That's an offside play. Brian Bickle this year has played against the Wild in four games. He's got three goals against him. Now he's only got 13 goals all year, but three have come. At the expense of the Wild, three goals and an assist in four games against them. Now, sometimes it just goes that way, Pat, right? I mean, you get a guy's number. I mean, you remember Victor Stahlberg. I mean, he owned the Columbus Blue Jackets, right? I think he had eight of his 18 or 19 goals in one season against the Columbus Blue Jackets. And all anybody ever wanted to do is say that he should be playing on the first or second line because... He was scoring against fourth line guys and uh, fifth and sixth defensemen. And it's been a well, battle since he's left. Oh, out of the league for a long time. Playing in uh, Milwaukee for a while. Two minutes to go in period two. Bouncing puck Zucker trying to get in. Stripped of it. Then got it back. Keeps one deflected wide. Good stick do you prevented that one from getting on target. And Shaw the other way. Waiting for a little help. Looking to center. Sharp. Check before he can pull the trigger. Good play, Suter. Sharp gets it back. Good pass tipped back the other way. Hawks have a couple of times, Pat, just not wanted to shoot the puck towards the net on that last rush there. Once it's there, it's got to get to the net. Right, we're going to go back to the Minnesota Wild power play. And from our Xfinity Telestrator, they're going to move the puck down to here. And Zach Parise takes the puck here. If Jason Palmaville comes into this area here, he might have had himself a real golden opportunity. See how far Palmaville is? Now look where this puck goes. I mean, it goes right down near the blue paint. They worked everything high, 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 and then they finally attacked down low. Other than that, the Hawks penalty kill did a great job there of keeping a Minnesota Wild power play up top and not give them anything. All right, now Tara Vinen for Brandon Saar. Trying to drive the net. He will with a one-hit shot. Saved by Dubnik. Rebound in behind. Tara Vinen got turned around. Or Vermette did, rather. And here's a keep by Keith. His long blast. A good look from Dubnik. Kicked out the right pad. And Fontaine cleared the zone. Final minute now of the second period. Here comes Thomas Vanek. Vanek. Threw it all the way across. A long shot, Spurgeon. Save, Crawford. Rebound picked up by the Hawks. Tara Vinen. Tara Vinen gets the line. Centered it for Matt. Waited, centered it. That uh, didn't connect. And back comes Vanek. 20 seconds, 20. Great patience there from Tara Vinen. 
Down to 20 left in the period. Here's Cumminville. Pass picked off for Steve. 10 to go for Steve. Slipped it into the middle now. Oh, and a second pass missing. Oh, do you? They might have an odd man rush. Parise, good stick, Chalmerson. Now, Granlin tried to center, picked off by Versteeg. But Nick Chalmerson, that could have been a problem for the Blackhawks defensively, and he made sure nothing happened. With a terrific defensive job in the defensive end. Blackhawks in the second period. They had the 15 shots on goal and had 23 in the game. The Wild had nine shots. They've had 15 in the game. So far, Dubnik and Crawford, perfect. All right, welcome back to West Madison Street. Hey, there's a happy human. <laughs> but uh, he has not seen a goal yet. The Hawks and the Wild getting ready for the third all-even at nothing. Assistant coach Mike Kitchen comes to us tonight to prove Acura. Kitch, as a guy, I want to ask a guy who played almost 500 games in the league as a defenseman and has coached defenseman regularly. I marvel a lot at what Nick Jalmerson brings to this team. But I think, I think maybe the most underrated thing is the fact he right side, left side, doesn't make any difference. Been playing the right almost all year. Now tonight he goes back to the left. It seems seamless. Is it as easy as he makes it look? No, it's not as easy as he makes it look. I mean, it's quite a task being able to play both sides. And then when you're doing it within a game, it's quite something else, too, because you're turning differently, you know, you're to the outside, and you're usually better going turning one way than you are the other way on the rush. And so, but, you know, when I first got here, he was a left side only. And then, but we had a need for uh, someone to move over to that right side, and he's done a terrific job. Now we're using him on both sides and uh, throughout the game. And I mean, uh, uh, that's not an easy uh, situation for a defenseman to play in, but he does a terrific job. He's, a, he's got such a great stick. He breaks up a lot of plays with his stick. He always leading with his stick into the puck area. Give me a couple seconds on what you guys talked about getting ready for the third here. Well, we're th we, we, we talked about shooting the puck earlier, whether it's a bad angle shot or a wrap. There's a lot of loose stuff in the crease area. Uh, rebounds that are like uh, three to five feet out in front of them, but we've got to get there to play those rebounds so we can get those second chances and get a dirty goal here. Both teams are playing very well defensively. There's a lot of speed out here. It's like a track meet. All right, appreciate a couple minutes. Good luck here in the third. Thanks, Pat. Thanks to Mike Kitchen for uh, throwing a headset on for us and for you as we get ready for the third period and we're underway. And this third period is brought to you by your Chicago Land and Northwest Indiana Honda dealers. Corey Booth, long wrister into the glove of Corey Crawford. Uh, just looking around the National Hockey League, a couple of scores. We saw the scoreboard early in the game. Earlier here tonight, the Pittsburgh Penguins had a 3-0 lead over the Ottawa Senators. The Ottawa Senators got back in that game score with a buck and a half left to go in the game, and they won the game in overtime. So the Ottawa Senators down 3 nothing, come back and win the game in overtime. And that Eastern Conference has gotten really snug, just like the West. Oh, wow, what a comeback by the uh, Ottawa Senators. And the Hamburglar does it again, Andrew Hammond. <laughs> Played his college hockey at Bowling Green State University. And... He's been the man, just like Devin Dubnik in Minnesota. Pat Hammond's been the guy when Chicago native Craig Anderson went out. Uh, it's an amazing run. Now Zucker got two at the puck came to Crawford, who's able to uh, hang on. Well, another score was interesting to me tonight, Eddie, you talking about the potential for the Blackhawks winning the Jennings Trophy. Fewest goals against to the league. The Rangers gave up two tonight, so now they're at 182 goals against. The Blackhawks entered the pl play tonight at 179. The only team better than them was Montreal, 178. So the Canadians are not playing tonight. This is the game at hand that the Hawks have. So uh, Crawford has given his team a chance, as have Ranta and Darling, to uh, maybe take a prestigious award, fewest goals against in the league. Rodine will wind it around to Suter. Long pass up the middle, captured by Grandin, but couldn't get anywhere with it. Ryan Suter, who in the first 40 minutes was on the ice for 18 of them. He's really taking it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now Taves had the stick escape him. It's going to pick off by uh, Parise. But uh, Roosevelt able to take a hit to roll it up the boards. And then Versteeg 
Chipped it ahead. Sharp gets the line. But it's knocked away to center ice. He sends it in. That pass missing. Everybody going to be icing Chicago. Hey, Pat, a uh, birthday shout-out. 15 years old today, Joey Carlson. A uh, happy birthday and also a belated happy birthday to Sandy Stork, who turned 50 years of age, a big Blackhawks fan a couple of days ago. All right, Brodziak and Shaw here. Brodziak won it. Now Dumba. Able to pick up the puck. Here come the Hawks. Shaw gets the line. Try to get it to Bickle, but Dumbly's sticking away of that pass attempt. Picked up by Sharp with a quick shot. Fought off by Dudnik. Rebound to the Wild. Those are the kinds of things Mike Kitchen was telling us about. Some loose change after the initial save from Devin Dudnik. Kodziak. Now Vanek threw it off the side of the net. He's trying to paint that in off of Crawford. Kodziak shielding on Rumblad. Spins it back, Dumba, with a long shot blocked by Shaw. And Sharp comes away with it, fights his way into the zone. Sharp weaves in the middle, dropped it to Bickle. Puck was at his feet, though. Now it finds Sharp, and he's unable to pick it up. So the Hawks will change on the move. At the end of a long shift there for the uh, Sharp-Shaw-Bickle line. The Mets pass, tip ahead, Spurgeon. Taking away Vaughn. Lines it in deep. Candela. Able to bounce it to center. No! <laughs> now, back come the Hawks. Vaughn going wide with a long wrist shot. Soaked up by Dubnik. No second chance available there. We'll get the app and join Club Blackhawks right now. A new safe space for young fans to connect with the Blackhawks and build your fantasy team. Play Blackhawks trivia and earn badges. Visit clubhouse, clubblackhawks.com to learn more and download today. Cougar getting pitched here, so... Tara Vinan will step in against Koivu. And the draw, Tara Vinan, a hot pass was at the feet of Nordstrom. Now Kruger with a wraparound. Dubnik beat him to the far post, and Zucker got it out. That's a hand pass, and the whistle sounds. Hey, Pat, uh, we want to uh, let our great Blackhawk fans know that uh, next Monday night, the 13th of uh, April, uh, you're going to be at the uh, Dick Sporting Goods in Lombard, Illinois, and I'm going to be there for security at 6.30 p.m. <laughs> 6.30 to 8, we're going to have a little question and answer with the great Blackhawk fans and get an opportunity to sign some autographs as well. So that's 6.30 at the Dick Sporting Goods next Monday night. Talk a little hockey and uh, meet some of the uh, great Blackhawk fans in that neck of the woods. Well, at that point, it'll be a playoff yeah, preview. Right, we'll exactly. know what the matchup is then. <laughs> And it might not be till then. Here's a long time <laughs> just missing from Chalmerson. We'll know where the questions are coming from. Yeah. That's for sure. Taves gets the line. Hosa drives and shoots. Save. Dubnik rebound loose. And a wild get it out. Another rebound. You mentioned earlier, Pat, in that great interview you did with Mike Kitchen. Pucks have been laying there. Loose puck just out of the reach of Taves. Do you? We'll wait for some changes to be made. Seabrook had to just get rid of this one with uh, not many options available. Scandella to Stewart, who's unable to hang on at center. Back comes Kruger. Now Koibu for the while. We'll drop it to Jared Spurgeon. Zucker 
Fights to Rodulia. He drives and shoots. Oh, that just missed the far post. Held in Scandella. In behind Stewart. Here's Stewart. Little stop and go on Seabrook. His pass picked off. Good stick Nordstrom, and the Hawks get it out. This, though, will it get on net? It will. No icing. Chicago there. Chris Stewart, who we've mentioned a, a bunch tonight, the, uh, one of the wild wingers. Big guy brings a physical element to the uh, Minnesota side. And as Keith drops in with a shot, and a save. Dubnik gets loose. Not anymore. The whistle goes, and the play is stopped. A good play here by Patrick Sharp coming down those left wing boards. Gets the puck to Duncan Keith, who got some position here, Pat, and just gets it to the net. Finds his way through. Good right pad save there. Brian Bickle in front of the net, and then Shaw gets knocked down. This is what we're talking about here, Pat. Shot by Holsa right into the right into the La Banza, right in the midsection, <laughs> uh, the bread basket, and the rebound is there. Sharp tees up a long one. That's soaked up by Dubnik. We're just finishing up on the Chris Stewart. Mike Yo was talking about his arrival this morning and the physical element that he does bring to his team. And he referenced the fact that people talk about him as a rental player. Contract ends at the end of the year, but he said he's really been pleased with his approach since arriving in Minnesota. He said he's played like anything but a rental. Played like a guy who wants to be here. Loose puck at front show! Somehow unable to finish it! And Vanek starts back for Minnesota. I don't know how it, it, was Shaw not hooked on that play for the wide open net? Yeah, the Hawks run blad starts back. David Runblad with a wrist shot up high off the glass. And back comes Minnesota. Rodziak, that's going to be an offside play as he got to the Hawks line. The first thing that I thought of, Pat, is why did Andrew Shaw die for this puck? And then Ryan Suter's there and... The wide open net, Shaw sees it and... Yeah, I know there was no hook. And it just looked like Shaw was diving for that puck there, Pat. And I, I don't think that Suter tripped him up. I think it was more. That's what the official probably saw from our yeah. vantage point. I thought that he got hooked up the way that he fell. But what an opportunity with that puck laying there. Again, Brian Bickle going harder than that there, Pat. Causes some confusion. Tying up Rodine. And what a chance there for the Shaw line. Saad able to get rid of Coyle and cleared it into Bond. That's an offside play. Oh, he got sandwiched. That was a second or two after the whistle, so the Hawks not thrilled about the contact on the 22-year-old kid in his first ever NHL game and a rather rude greeting to <laughs> his professional, uh, the start of his pro career. Dumba and Coyle, give him a little how you doing. Welcome back to downtown Chicago. Sadly, we would like to take a moment here to pass along our sympathy to the Illinois State University family after the tragic news of last night. Among the passengers, a very close friend of the Blackhawks family, Terry Stralo. Terry owns Pub 2 in Normal, an official Blackhawks bar where he hosted the Stanley Cup in both 2010 and 13. Blackhawks also want to extend their condolences to all the families touched by this tragedy, including Illinois State University's Deputy Director of Athletics, Aaron Leach, and ISU Men's Basketball Associate Head Coach, Tori Ward. Our thoughts with the family, families and the many friends of all seven passengers and the entire Bloomington Normal community with uh, that tragedy that uh, just occurred. Here's a chance for the Wild. Big save by Crawford. Uh, they had a wonderful point blanket with Brodeen jumping into the play and the D-man right to the net. Yeah, only the uh, 19th shot on goal for the Minnesota Wild. And break down through the middle of the ice. Brodeen probably could have taken that puck pat all the way over to the forehand. Look how much room he has here on the left-hand side. Can he take this puck over a little bit more? Yeah, Roosevelt wasn't coming over, but good save. Oh, what a save on a redirect. That's a long initial shot. Paris, I believe, got a tip. And Crawford with a terrific stop off a wild face-off win. And two chances in a matter of seconds for the visitors. Pomaville gets in, dropped it to Parise with a shot right through the blue paint. Comes back to Vanek, or a Brodeen rather, he rings it around. 
Here's Hosa. And Marion Hosa will now lead the Hawks away. Hosa is pass broken up at center. Zucker back in. Thomason there to meet him. Hosa took it away to clear. Well, it's bounced back to Cofford, who will glove and hold. Well, a couple of real good stops back to back from Corey Crawford off a faceoff win. Help from Palmonville, the quick shot, and Crawford's able to fight that off. Brody, back to back, partner. Maybe off the, either off Parise, as you mentioned, or maybe even off Michael Roosevelt, maybe standing right in front of Crawford and Corey Crawford. Getting a little time to breathe a little bit. The line's been uh, checking on the uh, netting in behind Corey Crawford. Now Oduya for Seabrook. Nordstrom gets the line, but the three Minnesota white sweaters are right there. Bouncing puck. Here's a chance for Zucker with a shot. And he was taken down by Seabrook. Went badly to the end boards. He got the stick of Crawford as well, but Jason Zucker, who's in his first game tonight since early February, paid the price to uh, get a good chance. The puck took a bad bounce past Brent Seabrook. Right there, and he goes hard to the net and kind of gets his leg caught up with Seabrook and then ends up going right into the post right there. It was probably more of the boards. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he didn't even make contact with the post here, Pat. He looked like he avoided it and maybe brushed up against it a little bit. But he's talking to the uh, medical trainer there. But Jason Zucker has really developed into a solid player for Mike Yo in the Minnesota Wild. Eight minutes gone by in the third. No score in the game. Now the wild Brodziak. Good. Gets in. Stripped away. Good stick. Keith. Fontaine looked out in the Hawks bench. So that one is shot out of play. Well, Sunday night, CSN Original Production presents Believe, the story of the 2005 Chicago White Sox. Relive the unforgettable moments and memories from the World Series winning season with former players, coaches, celebrities, and more. Believe premieres Sunday night at 7. Comcast Sportsnet. Shooter moving slowly, Brodeen. And Big Coyle dumped it. Well, a corner battle. Niederreiter working against Rumblag. There's those magnetic boards you talk a lot about. <laughs> working really well. Well, I mean, in today's day and age, the way the official, I mean, you can't get a whistle. That not used to be, a, yeah, no. used to be in your day, that would, yeah. the play would be stopping. Not anymore. Keep going, boys. Here's Shaw looking to center. Quick shot. And blocked in front. What a play, Niederreiter. That was a great chance for Sharp. He was going upstairs. And uh, he was trying that for sure, but uh, Niederreiter, a huge block. Here's Parise for Commonville. Good save by Carl He made a second save on Parise, who butted it out of midair. They gave him a tap on the pad, appreciating a brilliant effort from the goalie. Well, the Hawks in the middle of a change, Pat. Palmonville off the glove. Parise gets that puck, knocks it out of midair, and ends right up and under Corey Crawford. Incredible goaltending. We said it hundreds of times this year, but without question. The best year in the National Hockey League for Corey Crawford. He just made another save rebound. They score! And a second chance taken by Granlund after a good stop on the initial redirect. Granlund found the rebound. Minnesota has the lead.
Well, you can only ask your goaltender to make so many saves. Save, rebound, and Michael Granlin finds it. First chance, right back out. And what patience there by Granlin. Forehand, backhand, Crawford moving right. Not able to cover the left. And the Minnesota Wild with a 1-0 lead. And Mikhail Granlin getting his eighth goal of the year. And it takes a while to the advantage. That line, Parise, Pomodoro, Granlin, they have been pretty solid tonight, and they get the opening tally in the game. It's going to be icing wild. Third period, about six shots the first 10 minutes. Minnesota has had 11. So the Wild coming on here at period three. As for Met and Teresa, or I should say uh, Koibu, attempt to get ready. Off to Suter. Stewart dumped it. Well, here comes Keith for the dump in. One glad put it deep. Rodine there, able to find Suter. Clearing attempt held in Runblad. He got checked by Ryan Suter. It's cleared around, held in. No, it did keep, keep it. He did. And following up is Brodziak to get it out of there. And an update from St. Louis. The Winnipeg Jets have beaten the Blues 1-0. Well, the Hawks could get to within a point of St. Louis, but they need to find... A couple of strikes here in the last nine minutes. Here's Sharp. Pass deflecting. Back come the Wild. The centering attempt picked off by Jalmerson. Going to be held in by the Wild. The Schrader shot went right through the blue paint. And now... Uh, Roosevelt moved it to Sharp. A big board battle at center. And the Wild come up with the puck. Puck's got to start getting the puck down low. Got to work the puck in the offensive zone down below the top of the circles. Might have to become a chip and chase type of game. They're not able to get the puck in right now, Pat. Minnesota's as good as any team in the league through the middle of the ice. Puck's got to get in deep and you got to get the work on the forecheck. Seabrook rolled at the center. There is a chip and chase. Suter and it was shielded away from Tara Vinen and an easy exit for Granlin. Clearing to center, here come the Wild. Parise dropped at the Pommonville. Good back check, Tara Vinen. Evo Tara Vinen, that 14 shots in his last four games. He rings this one around. Looking to change on the go. Taves working the end board. Versteeg in there as well. Taves got the puck. Dropped that out to Runblad, then he missed Keith with a pass. Runblad. Sends it in deep. Koivu there. And he took a funny hop off a partition going all the way down. Icing wild. Well, Thursday night, the Hawks will head to St. Louis to take on the Blues. Coverage starts on CSN Chicago at 6.30. Don't miss it. Hawks and Blues. Two games remaining in the regular season. Well, the Blues, who... 
scored two here on Sunday, yeah. scored nothing tonight. Here's a long flip shot, not getting all the way to Dubnik. And it is hopped away from Hosa. Here comes Stewart into the zone. Has Zucker with him. Stewart for Zucker right in. He scored. What a pass. Chris Stewart put Jason Zucker right to the net. And the guy who hasn't played in over a month for the Wild has doubled their lead. Pat, you were talking about Chris Stewart a little earlier. Watch the effort that he makes right in this area here. Watch the stick. Puck is on the boards. He's able to get it through the first layer. Gets it by, fakes the shot, and passes the puck all the way over. If you're David Rundblad, you're going to come over there. You got to make sure that puck doesn't go weak side. Your job is not to allow that pass to go over. Whatever it is, you got to lay out. You got to stay there. Whatever it is, is you can't not you cannot allow that pass to get to the weak side, the opposite side of the puck, and leave your goaltender with no chance of making that save. Now here's the long shot going just wide from side. And a while able to get it back. And Della cleared it. Jack moved in, but that's going to be an offside play. Going to go back to that play, Pat. And uh, for all you young hockey players, uh, we got a commercial. Okay, sorry, partner. Okay, well, watch what happens here, Pat. He's got to make sure he stays here and not allow this pass to come through. So if you're going to come all the way over, you better make sure you get the puck. And uh, unfortunately for David Rumblad, he was not able to do that. The Wild up by two late in the third. That's what we promised. Earlier, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Well, no score headed to the third period. And then the Cal Granlin with a beautiful move after Corey Crawford made three A-plus saves off of unbelievable chances by the Minnesota Wild. And then Chris Stewart, what a fake, slides it over to Jason Zucker. And he gets his 19th of the year in the Wild. Looking up at the scoreboard and seeing what's going on around the Western Conference. They've come in here, not winning their last three games, and are up 2-0 late here in the third period. So let's see. Devin Dubnik has had six shutouts this year. He's had 14 in his career. One of those whitewashes this season came against the Blackhawks. This is icing Chicago, and... Uh, he stopped 24 shots in a row that night. He stopped 30 shots in a row tonight. 54 in a row. The Hawks have not been able to penetrate Devin Dubnik. And if they get a chance here, Pat, I'm sure their defense are going to become much more active here. Down by two is if you get a chance, you want to try to think high and hard. You want to try to think little chin music right under the crossbar. Get him down, hold on to the puck, and fire it upstairs. Tudor's bid is denied by Crawford. Armadale hit hard by Seabrook. Well, it's in behind to Jason Commonville. He and Seabrook continue to battle. Finally, uh, Vermette got the puck, but his pass deflecting. Seabrook right taking over. And his clearing attempt picked off Parise, but his pass missed. Jonas Brodeen. Into the Chicago Ice. That missed Stewart, so all the way down, it's icing wild. Well, time now for our GMC professional grade saves. And we've seen some great ones by both goaltenders. That was Joachim Nordstrom back in the First period, Brandon Saab with a great chance, Sharp with a chance. The redirect by Brian Bickle here in the third. Some quality chances, but not enough for the home team. Down two with 5.07 left. Sharp work on the boards. Taking away Brodeen, able to uh, scoop it the other way. Some backhand pass finding Sharp, then Bickle over skating it. Now 
Jalmerson. Going rink wide. Shaw's pass broken up. Scandella. Sharp out of the out from behind the net, but the puck rolled away. Now it's Rosaval. His pass missed Sharp. Icing Chicago. Will earn a chance to have Patrick Sharp visit your elementary or middle school. Get the entire family involved in gathering gently used clothes and household items. Then go to any participating Goodwill store and donation center from now until April 30th. The school with the greatest number of items donated will receive a visit from Sharpie. Wild get the draw. Sharp gets help to move it from the hog zone. Tara Vinen. Shift it in. Won't stay there long, though. Well, it is held in finally by Kruger. Back goes Brodeen. Here it off the glass and out. Avo Terabina back into the zone. Waits. Centered it. It goes right to Dubnik, who will cover it up. So, Gotta shoot the puck, partner. Yep. Under four minutes remaining. Devin Dubnik. Perfect so far. Well, these fans all needing a red light to get them excited. Down to three and a half left. Devin Dubnik going for his seventh shutout of the year. If he gets it, he would be fourth in the NHL. Braden Holtby has eight. Carey Price and Mark andre Fleury have nine whitewashes so far this season. Expect Blackhawk defensemen to be really aggressive now. And how aggressive does Joel Quindle get? to get Corey Crawford on the ice for the extra attacker. Got to say, no. Got to say, once you get to right under three minutes, Pat, you got control of the offensive zone. You got to get him to the, get him to the bench for the extra attacker. Good pressure by Hosa, forcing a turnover, but then Rodin got it back, helping out his partner, uh, Suter, who had been victimized. Uh, the Hosa check. The Wild able to clear their zone. And here comes Grandlin. He gets to the line with a long touch shot. Pad save. Crawford playing the side. Three minutes remaining. A pass jumped away from Bond, who gets a late shift with his team down two. It's shot the other way. Icing wild. Another NHL action. We told you St. Louis lost tonight. They were shot out by the Winnipeg Jets. one nothing. And right now in Denver, the Colorado Avalanche leading Nashville 2-1 in the second intermission. The one team ahead of the Hawks has lost. Another one is losing with the third period to go in the Mile High City. Hawks down two here, 2.45 left. Here's the draw. Taken by Spurgeon. The Scandella who moved it to center. Here's Jalmerson. Looking across to Vermette, but that did not connect. Nico Koivu gets the Hawks line. Taken away Bond. Now Jalmerson. Move it over Stig. There goes Crawford to the bench. Six attackers. Chicago as Crawford gets to the Hawks bench. Shaw turned it over at center. Here is Grantham, but he could not advance it very well. Cleared back head. Sharp fights his way into the zone. Sharp to Bickle. The shot is scored! Brian Bickle! Followed up and put it high over the glove side of Dubnik. And the Hawks have life with 108 seconds remaining.
The Minnesota Wildcat had a chance to shoot at the empty net. Mikael Granlin has it. He tries to stick handle. It's denied by Nicholas Jalmerson. There's Bickle. There's Sharp. Watch where Bickle goes. You mentioned Pat shot out of a cannon. Duped it down. He goes up and over the glove. Corey Crawford back in net. And the Hawks are only down by one. 14 goals this year for Brian Bickle. Four have come against the Minnesota Wild. Well, now they get the draw, and it's... Fought four on the boards, finally cleared the other way. Seabrook back. 90 seconds remaining. Here's Shaw. He gets it into the zone. There goes Crawford. Here's Shaw. Shot blocked. Six attackers again for the Hawks. Koivu goes up the boards. Rodziak got it out of there for Minnesota. 75 left. Here comes Keith. Looking for somewhere to go. They're all five Minnesota skaters between the blue lines here. Hawks have to dump it. Back goes Spurgeon. Checked by Shaw. Now Hosa jammed it loose. Rosenthal had it knocked away. And Rudblatt has to get back. Final minute now of regulation time. Rosenthal banks it for Saad. Scandella gets together with him in the corner. Saad won the puck. Now in behind, here's Taves looking to Hosa. His turnaround shot blocked. And the Wild safely get it out of there. Half a minute left. Runblad pressured by Coyle. He's got a problem. Taken away. Niederreiter. Goal saved by a shot block by Rosenbaum. Now we're down to 20 seconds left. Final rush for the Hawks. Down to goal. Saad driving on Scandella. One-hand shot right through the blue paint. Taken back by Keith on the blast. Save Dubnik. He holds. Timeout coming here for the Hawks. Face off to the right of Devin Dubnik. The strength side of Jonathan Taves. What a rush, though, by Brandon Saad. Nobody able to get to the blue paint. One of the wild players had lost his stick as well, and then the good shot and a good chance from Duncan Keith to Devin Dubnik. So you mentioned Michael Rosaval, Pat. Saves a goal. I mean, that puck's going right in the center of the net, and you see their reaction from Michael Rosaval there wincing a little bit. So the Blackhawks going over. Yeah, there's Rosie. I'll tell you what, it's not going to feel as bad as the Hawks can find a way to put the puck in the back of the net. I'll even give him an assist on it, even though he's sitting on the bench, partner. But the Blackhawks <laughs> going over a one faceoff. What they're going to try to get accomplished and what they're going to do on a lost draw. So you got Saad versus Stieg, Shaw, Taves up front with Keith and Seabrook on the points. 12 seconds remaining. Taves is 7 and 6 at the dot tonight. Koibu moves in against him. Here's the draw. Taves pulled it back to Keith. Then for Stieg, Seabrook going back door. The pass broken up by Brodziak, and that's going to finish it for the Wild. Minnesota comes into the United Center and hands the Blackhawks a defeat. And since that man arrived in Minnesota, they are now 27, 8, and 3. An incredible run for the visitors. So with these results, and again, Nashville is losing in Denver with 20 minutes remaining, but the Hawks stuck at 102, St. Louis sticks at 105, and Nashville at 104 and some time remaining in their game. But the Wilds still now have a chance to catch the Hawks for the third spot in the division. Devin Dubnik makes 32 saves and propels his team to yet another victory.